And how would Hawaii fit into that, or the Sandwich Islands, as they were called at the time, um, into that? Yeah. Um, uh, Hawaii was seen as sort of a, a stepping stone into greater control of the Pacific. Um, Hawaii at this time, as you know, was, was at least nominally independent. A lot of European imperial powers wanted a slice of it. Um, uh, the United States, under a slave-holding president, actually extended the Monroe Doctrine to Hawaii, um, and a lot of Southerners looked to the island and looked to its coercive labor relationships on large sugar plantations and said, hey, that, that's familiar enough. We can do that. Um, the fact is not many uh, Southern slaveholders actually migrated to Hawaii, um, but they were thinking about it. And you can play all sorts of counterfactuals as to what they would have done with Hawaii had they won independence in 1861 or 62 or 63. Mm. Um, it's not out of the question that that would have been another sort of spot on the map that they thought of colonizing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I was for a minute, I was seeing like, Okay, not 1890s that Hawaii gets part, but 1860s that Hawaii gets, and, and yeah, I mean, that's the other part of like what if the South had won, how that would have played out for um, for the Pacific world. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, all sorts of fun counterfactuals. Like, yeah, I won't go down that rabbit hole right now with you, but. Or I'm happy to, but uh, I won't keep talking on the subject. We can like maybe that. do a part two eventually on that. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs>